Good afternoon. My name is James Williams. I'm with the County of Santa Clara. We have an important announcement from seven of our local health officers representing among the largest jurisdictions in the Bay Area. We have with us this afternoon, Santa Clara County Health Officer, Dr. Sarah Cody, Marin County Health Officer, Dr. Matt Willis, Alameda County Health Officer, Dr. Erica Pan, San Francisco Health Officer, Dr. Tomas Aragon, Contra Costa County Acting Health Officer, Dr. Ori Civelli, and City of, City of Berkeley Health Officer, Dr. Lisa Hernandez, and San Mateo County Health Officer, Dr. Scott Morrow. We'll turn first to Santa Clara County Health Officer, Dr. Sarah Cody. Good afternoon and thank you for being here. Again, my name is Dr. Sarah Cody. I'm the Public Health Officer for the County of Santa Clara. I'm joined today by my fellow Public Health Officers from seven Bay Area jurisdictions. Together, we cover Silicon Valley and much of the Bay Area region, including San Mateo, San Francisco, Marin, Contra Costa, Alameda, uh, City of Berkeley, and of course, right here in Santa Clara County. As of last night at 5 p.m., there were a total of 273 cases of COVID-19 across our seven jurisdictions. We know that Santa Clara County is the epicenter of this outbreak in the Bay Area, and we know that COVID-19 is spreading rapidly. Today, we stand together to announce additional legal orders that will apply to all seven jurisdictions covering Silicon Valley and the core of the Bay Area region. These new orders direct all individuals to shelter at their place of residence and maintain social distancing of at least six feet from any other person when outside their resident. The order outlines circumstances under which people may leave their residences and defines essential activities, essential government functions, essential businesses, and essential infrastructure. A few highlights. People experiencing homelessness are exempt from this order, but are strongly urged to obtain shelter, and governmental and other entities are strongly urged to make such shelter available as soon as possible. All businesses with a facility in any of the seven Bay Area jurisdictions, except essential businesses, are required to cease all activities beyond minimum basic operations. All essential businesses are strongly encouraged to remain open to the greatest extent possible. Essential businesses shall comply with social distancing requirements, including when customers are standing in line. All public and private gatherings of any number of people occurring outside a household or living unit are prohibited with limited exceptions. And all travel except essential travel and essential activities will be prohibited. Mass transit will remain open. People may use public transit only for purposes of performing essential activities or to travel to and from work to operate essential businesses maintain essential government functions or essential infrastructure. People riding on public transit must comply with social distancing requirements to the greatest extent possible. This order will take effect at 12.01 a.m. tomorrow, March 17th, and will remain in place for at least three weeks. This order was crafted with the seven of us and our respective county council it was crafted in order to balance the public health imperative to take swift action to ensure social distancing with the need to preserve basic infrastructure and essential services to maintain our society. I want to uh, remind you uh, and, and note health services will remain open, grocery stores will remain open, pharmacies will remain open, Food can be ordered from restaurants or delivery or carry out. Gas stations, banks, and hardware stores will remain open. And essential government services and essential infrastructure will continue to operate. 
we know that the exemptions to these rules are complicated. They're written, uh, not, they're written uh, for health officers with the help of our legal counsel. And rather than attempt to answer specific questions, uh, we will be posting detailed FAQs on each of our respective websites uh, to help the public and everyone uh, understand uh, what we are attempting to do. I recognize that this is unprecedented. And if I thought last Friday's announcement was hard, this one is exponentially harder. But we must come together to do this. And we have done this as a collective of health officers. We know we need to do this and we know we need a regional approach. We all must do our part to slow the spread of COVID-19 and ensure that our essential services <clears throat> remain intact and open, most especially our hospitals and healthcare facilities. Now I'd like to introduce my colleague, Dr. Matt Willis uh, from Marin County. Thank you, Dr. Cody. I'm Matt Willis, public health officer from Marin. It's important to remember that social distancing and sheltering at home does not mean disconnection. You can remain con connected to the things you need. The essential things we need will be available to us. Grocery stores will remain open. We're encouraging restaurants to remain open for deliveries. You can get your medicine from your pharmacy. You can still visit your doctor if you have an urgent medical need. You can even take your dog for a walk. We can all expect to start feeling some cabin fever and it'll be important to remember that we can get outdoors as long as you're practicing those best practices in social distancing that we've been talking about. We are not expecting empty streets but would rather those who go out are out for those most essential trips to include getting your necessities. Social distancing does not mean disconnection with each other. Let's be innovative and stay connected with our neighbors, our friends, and our vulnerable elders through calls, texts, and online communication. This is a necessary step for all of us to stay healthy together. I'd like to now introduce my colleague, Dr. Erica Pond, Health Officer for Alameda County. Thank you, Dr. Willis. This joint action, we are demonstrating today in unity to show the importance of how important it is we need to come together as a community and as a region to protect our most vulnerable. We are here to protect the elderly and those with underlying medical conditions. Together, we can slow the spread of disease and protect our parents, our grandparents, and those who need us most to help protect them from serious illness and hospitalization. Thank you. I'd like to now introduce Dr. Aragon from San Francisco. Good afternoon. My name is Dr. Tomas Aragon. I'm the health officer of the city and county of San Francisco. First, I wanna just thank everybody, the health officers, but also all the support that we have been receiving in the prior weeks for everything that we do. We have felt very supportive for every, every action that we've taken, and we're grateful for the continuing support of everyone. For in San Francisco, our, we've had three core goals from the very beginning. One is to protect the public, but especially the most vulnerable populations, to protect our healthcare system, and our healthcare workers that we need to keep healthy so that they can take care of us. And the way that we're going to do this is by reducing community spread of this virus. Sheltering in place is a core strategy. By staying home, you reduce your risk of becoming exposed, which means that we reduce the risk of transmission, we reduce the risk of illness, and severe disease, we reduce the risk on our healthcare, I'm sorry, the demands on our healthcare system, and thereby we improve the health and social impacts in the long term. Thank you again for every, everyone for all the support. And as Dr., as, I'm sorry, as Mayor Breed has reminded us, we're all gonna get through this together. We've been through tough times before and we're gonna, we're gonna do it again. 
Thank you. I want to now introduce the Acting Health Officer of Contra Costa County, County Dr. Zielli. Thank you. Hello, my name is Oritz Vielli, and I'm the Acting Health Officer for Contra Costa County. I want to thank our federal partners and state partners, our um, firefighters, our elected officials, our municipal partners, our nonprofit partners. This is a time where we as a community all have to come together and all of us have to work together to get through it. We know this is not the normal way of doing business. It's going to take some sacrifice on all of our parts, but we're doing this for the right reasons. We're doing this to help prevent unnecessary death. We're doing it so we can all stay healthy and together we can remain a stronger community at the end of all of this. I'd now like to introduce Dr. Lisa Hernandez from the city of Berkeley. Good afternoon, I'm Dr. Lisa Hernandez. Collective action is powerful and with no vaccine or medicine for COVID-19, our unified actions have the power to slow the virus and to continue to maintain a healthy community. I wanna thank my colleagues here and the colleagues in the city of Berkeley for supporting this effort and continuing to, to uh, protect the community that we serve. I want to now introduce Dr. Scott Morrow, Health Officer for the County of San Mateo. Hello, I'm Dr. Scott Morrow, the San Mateo County Health Officer. I do not usually um, address the press in this format, but I have a very important thing to say. My message is I stand in solidarity and in alignment with my fellow health officers in the Bay Area. I ask the community to follow our recommendations, to follow our advice, to follow our orders, to heed our warnings. We are in a rough place and we are going to have difficult times ahead of us. The measures that we are putting in place are temporary but they will last longer than any of us want. We need, this is the time to unite as a community, care, come to each other's aid, and dig really deep. Um, find your best inner self and pull out all the compassion and gratitude and kindness you can. Thank you. We're now going to have uh, a uh, comment from the president of the Board of Supervisors and from the mayor of the city of San Jose. President Chavez. Thank you. Thank you all very much for being here today. I know these are dire, um, a dire direction we're taking. It feels overwhelming. I want to re, uh, just re-emphasize how important it is that our public health officers are unified in believing that this is the next step we need to take to really slow down the coronavirus. The second thing I wanted to say is a very big and very sincere thank you to all the frontline workers, our emergency responders, people who we're gonna need to stay at work, like our grocery clerks, because we're gonna want everything to stay open that we can. So today is really about taking the next step to take cautious next steps about what we need to do to make sure our community is safe. The last thing I wanna say, because I know people wanna to get to questions is this. We as a community can completely handle this. Our goal right now is to make sure we have as few people as possible straining our medical resources so we're only using those for people who are most in need. What does this mean? This means being helpful to our neighbors. It means being good to our families. It means finding fun things to do 
in the house. I've already had friends tell me that this has been challenging. We're going to give you some ideas about what to do about that with your kids. But what it really means is pulling together as a community as we already are, and I know we will continue to do. Thank you. I'm going to ask Mayor uh, Ricardo to give us some words. Thank you. Thank you, President Chavez. <clears throat> I am. Um... I support the actions of the health officers throughout the Bay Area to enact a shelter in place mandate. We must move aggressively and immediately. The time for half measures is over and history will not forgive us for waiting an hour more. I appreciate that our residents have endured much already, but this is our generation's great test. Our moment to stand together as a community we need to work together to conquer this virus. And amid our collective fears, we will find uncommon courage. Now, it will take some time for us to get systems in place. And you'll hear me and President Chavez and Jeff Smith and Dave Seitz, who's behind me, uh, and many others talking about those systems in the days ahead. And I'm uh, honored to be joined as well by General Manager of our Valley Transportation Authority. Uh, so we appreciate everyone's patience as we're putting in place food delivery systems, child care for many of our health care workers and first responders uh, and the like. We'll need everyone's patience because we'll need to work together. And specifically on the issue of food distribution, I know that is increasingly a concern, particularly with the direction recommendation from the governor that seniors stay in place and those with health challenges also stay in their homes. In collaboration with the County of Santa Clara, the City of San Jose will be taking a lead on food distribution countywide. Our focus is ensuring food security for our most vulnerable residents among the 1.9 million residents of this county. Our principles are very simple. We're going to move fast. We're going to act comprehensively countywide, and we're going to act as one team. Uh, there are multiple networks here operating together, and the overwhelming majority of county residents will continue to be able to get their food as they do today, going to the grocery store. And if you're interested in heading to a restaurant, we hope that restaurant will remain open uh, and provide that food to go or drive through uh, for pickup. Uh, schools are standing up their own food distribution systems, particularly for low-income families whose children depend on that lunch or breakfast they get at school. For example, we said Union High School District, San Jose Union Unified School District and other districts are offering breakfast and lunch uh, to any children under 18. We will focus our delivery efforts uh, primarily on seniors and those with medical vulnerabilities, and we'll be standing up a massive volunteer effort, and you'll hear more about that tomorrow. Uh, we wanted to ensure that there was at least enough bandwidth in the media to be able to discuss this in some greater detail, and I think there's probably enough to announce for today. Uh, and we're grateful that there are some experienced, excellent nonprofits, CBOs like Second Harvest, that will be stepping up in a big way. Uh, we're going to use some non-traditional approaches as well. And we'll certainly rely on private sector players. We've reached out to DoorDash and others. Uh, and we're going to do this the Silicon Valley way. And we're going to do this in a way that integrates everyone working together to ensure that none of our residents is left behind. So we will be coordinating certainly with other city officials in the cities throughout the county, and of course with the county itself. And we'll be using all the data at our disposal. And uh, fortunately or unfortunately, we've been through a few emergencies in the last couple of years that have enabled us to better identify who's vulnerable, who's what we call a medical baseline patient, uh, where some of those folks are that we definitely need to hustle to be able to serve. Uh, so I uh, support uh, the actions, again, that have been announced today. We look forward to continuing to work with our county. <clears throat> and I want to reemphasize one message that you've heard already, which is that social distancing does not mean social diminution. Uh, we can continue to be a community. We can continue to find ways to help each other. We're going to need to care for each other to get through this together. And I look forward to exploring with the community the many creative ways we'll be able to do that in the days and weeks ahead. Thank you all. And County Executive Jeff Smith. So with that, uh, we'll take a few questions, uh, please, uh, in an orderly manner. And uh, We have approximately 15 minutes for Q&A, so one at a time. Right, right here. So, so can you explain how this uh, 
food distribution is going to work. You talk about DoorDash or whatever. How, how is that going to work? Yeah, happy to explain more in greater detail. It's fair to say that uh, we are moving at the speed of the information we're getting. Uh, and I think for cities and for nonprofits uh, throughout the Valley, uh, we're all going to be setting up these systems in the next hours and days. And there are a lot of folks who are working uh, triple overtime, including Dolan Beckles here in the back. Uh, and uh, they are working on setting up those systems now. <clears throat> so we'll certainly have more to announce in the days ahead. But, but basically, it's just going to be like a door dash, company like that. We're going to need to rely on a lot of volunteers. We're going to need to rely on existing companies. Uh, and we're going to need to rely on existing CBOs. Those nonprofits have been serving the community and doing such an excellent job. So, Mayor, as I'm sure you know, there have been food and supply shortages in recent days. People are going in at the start of the day, cleaning out their meat aisle, their toilet paper aisle, cleaning aisle. Is there, is there any discussion of a system that you guys can create that can maybe smooth that out, ration this? Yeah, as, as you know, many of the stores are already beginning to ration in terms of sales, and we've had some of those conversations with the county, and I expect uh, that you'll hear more on that in the next day or two. Uh, we recognize that there has been a lot of fear that has driven uh, consumer behavior that is not helpful. Uh, we want to assure everyone that all the food delivery systems that we rely on every day and have relied on for decades are gonna to continue to be in place. And so no one should fear that they need to go buy everything on the aisle. Uh, it is, there's going to be food and we're gonna push, push to make sure. Uh, we're also dealing, for example, with, we're understanding companies like Safeway may have difficulty delivering because of curfews on delivery. We're gonna get those curfews out of the way. That's what it takes to ensure more food gets delivered. Um, Dave Sykes, city manager. Um, as the mayor mentioned, many of us are responding to uh, these orders, uh, I think in a responsive way. Um, police departments ultimately would be responsible for enforcing some of these orders. Um, I think it's going to be important that we don't rush to that enforcement, that we set up the systems and processes in place so that the community understands what's expected of them before we rush to enforcement. But ultimately, I think all jurisdictions will have that responsibility. Okay, gentlemen number five, go ahead. Yeah, along with lines, I mean, part of the mission essential functions is there, without going too granular in detail, can you explain what is essential? There, uh, is there a cease and desist for a press conference with a bunch of news journalists? Yeah. So it'll be out there. Are you essential? Yeah, <laughs> I think you are. Uh, yeah. Maybe I'll take a first crack at it. I know some of my colleagues may want to as well. Uh, most of the mayors in the Bay Area are probably hearing about this for the first time in, a, in this news conference. So these, the implementation of these directives are up to each city and local jurisdiction. Uh, and we're going to do everything we can as the largest city in the region to flesh out as much as we can in a very public way for other cities to adopt if, if they find that helpful. Uh, but it's fair to say we're simply getting these directives in real time and we now have to translate them into very specific uh, orders. And obviously our police department is not gonna be out there enforcing uh, at midnight tonight. Uh, it's gonna take some time for us to get the systems in place uh, to get the rules in place, to ensure everybody understands what the rules are, uh, and then uh, to enforce as if it's really appropriate. Uh, we expect most folks will be following the direction without the need for law enforcement. Go ahead. And I actually, can I ask Sheriff Smith if you don't mind coming up to you? So I just wanted to add a little bit of context to what the mayor said. Um, you know, we've, many cities have been planning for this and understand that we are mm -hmm. going to be at a point where we're going to be providing essential services. The orders that have been issued give each city a fair amount of uh, discretion to determine what that is for each city. I know in our city, the city of San Jose, we've done quite a bit of work and a lot more detail will be coming out. But I want to reassure you, it is more than just police and fire. There are many essential services that are needed to keep a city running in a safe and orderly and healthy way. And so more detail will be forthcoming. But I want to reassure you, it's more than just police and fire. It's much more than that. 
No, I just brought her in case there was any questions. Uh, so we've seen this slow ramp up of measures going into place over the last couple of weeks. Uh, you said that this is a more difficult decision to make than the announcement that you made on Friday. Can you tell us, was there anything in particular, a tipping point that's taken place between here and there that made this necessary? Thank you so much for that question. Um, as, I, as I said in my remarks on Friday, we were seeing uh, a tipping point here in Santa Clara County with exponential growth of our cases. We've also looked at the acuity. A number of our cases are hospitalized and some requiring intensive care. Over the weekend, uh, we, I had a discussion with fellow health officers in the Bay Area, and we were looking at trends and realized very quickly that we are one region, and that's what's happening in Santa Clara County today, where we're the epicenter, will soon be happening in our adjacent uh, the, the adjacent jurisdictions. We decided collectively that we needed to take swift action as soon as possible to prevent the further spread and to protect our critical healthcare infrastructure. These orders were crafted uh, with great thought and with great care. They were also crafted uh, very, very quickly. Uh, we thought of everything that we could. Our intent is to preserve essential infrastructure to enable people to uh, get food, get medicines, um, to enable people to telecommute, to enable the businesses that support, uh, you know, all kinds of core infrastructure uh, to remain operating. Uh, at the same time, we are also trying to maximize social distancing to the greatest degree possible uh, because we know that this is moving so fast and we needed to take very, very swift action. Is uh, testing being ramped up? Is there an update on testing? And also for the jails, is there any update on the speed at jails and their functioning? I can tell you that uh, testing has begun to accelerate. There, I believe, as of today, a site has been uh, stood up, one in Santa Clara and one in Santa, uh, San Mateo County. A number of commercial laboratories are coming online in addition to the academic laboratories. So yes, that's beginning to ramp up. And as I mentioned in, in previous remarks, once we expand testing, uh, we'll be able to identify and report more cases. So our numbers uh, will increase rather uh, dramatically. Can you elaborate on what like ramping up is specific? On what scale is this happening right now? I can't give you I can't give you particular I can't give you numbers because I don't I don't have them about the quantity of testing available. Uh, but what I just want to emphasize is that testing is now become uh, decentralized prior it was done just within the public health laboratory system and now it's across the commercial and academic sector. That's a, uh, an excellent point. One of the reasons that we need to <clears throat> slow the spread of this infection as quickly as we can uh, is to protect healthcare workers. Healthcare workers are also residents in our community who are at risk of being exposed to the virus, just as we all are, um, in addition to in their workplace. Uh, so we have had a number of healthcare workers infected. I don't have the exact numbers. That is happening here in our county and in many other communities. And that is one of the, one of the many reasons that it's imperative uh, to slow the spread and preserve the workforce. That's one follow-up question here. Yes, very briefly, we had two exposures in the jail. They were immediately isolated. We had two additional exposures. We have no confirmed cases uh, in the jail at all. For uh, Dr. Sanatoni, I heard some of the key, can you include uh, some of the key points in Spanish for Spanish speakers? Uh, maybe after. Actually, we have a Spanish speaker ready to do um, interviews after this press conference. So we have this question over here and then that piece. So, Dr. Dr. Tony, you talked about the number of patients requiring hospitalization and acute care. Can you get into any more specifics or how close we are, perhaps, 
consistently overwhelmed. And can we get, you know, sort of that daily data on, you know, some kind of graph that shows us if these measures are beginning to suppress right. the spread? Um, we very much want to provide as much data as we can to the public uh, for a number of reasons. In part, we want you to understand why we are taking the actions that we are. It, it's um, more difficult than it would seem to classify the cases by whether they're in the hospital or at home or in the ICU. And the very simple reason for that is because the case status changes. People are moving between those, the between home and the hospital, or between the hospital and the ICU, uh, and so we are trying to figure out how we can uh, uh, make those data um, accurate and useful. Um, but big picture, right now the acuity of our cases is rather high. That is because we are finding we are doing more testing in the hospital at this moment than we are in the outpatient setting. So as we progress and testing expands, I think those proportions will change. The proportion of patients in the hospital will shrink uh, and those who are isolating at home will grow. And limits on travel. I don't know if you can address that. I mean, can people get their car and drive where they want to go? Can they hop on a plane if they had an existing reservation? We haven't really talked about travel. Um, I will try to give you a high-level overview. Uh, the order restricts non-essential travel. So you may travel by public transportation, private automobile, or an airplane uh, to perform essential functions for essential services or essential businesses. The idea, though, is to limit it as much as possible. The, the whole idea behind this is to have people remain in small, stable groups and to limit mixing uh, to the greatest degree possible. Um, Larry Lerato, can you make a general statement of the percentage of treatment you do? Because um, I think we're going to want to hear a lot more about that too. Uh, sure, I think you probably- We have a secret available after yeah. the press conference to be on camera. Okay. I'm happy to give a statement after that, but I think probably best to have county officials or experts to give that statement. As testing ramps up and as testing is still limited, um, we have had to include some priority groups. And in the, the broad outlines are, and this is both for testing uh, as well as information that we're going to get with tests when it expands. Um, it's very important to us to know if someone is positive and they're performing an essential, an essential role uh, because that's of public health importance. That's just the, 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 the general outlines because remember our, our goal here is to limit social distancing at the same time that we preserve essential functions and essential services. Okay. Yes. Okay, last question here. Dr. Cody, it's for you, Dr. Cody. Oh, sorry. Um, I had a lot of people that contacting the station saying they're sick and they have they have symptoms, whether it's a high fever, a cough, et cetera. It's unknown whether they actually have CV. Maybe they haven't uh, traveled abroad or maybe they haven't had direct contact with somebody who is tested positive. They're telling us they can't get tested for it. They feel like they want to be able to get tested for it. What's the position from the health professionals on this? If you have exhibit symptoms, should you be able to go in and get tested? So uh, I have a very, very important message. If you have symptoms of fever, cough, shortness of breath, or any of those symptoms of getting a viral infection, and they're much the same, right, at the beginning, you must stay home. Even if you're, and most especially if you're an essential worker, you must stay home and self-isolate and not spread. As testing ramps up, it will be, um, it's not possible now for everyone with symptoms to obtain a test, but over the, you know, with every day, the testing uh, capacity expands. So people will be able to get tested and know whether they have this infection or another one. Uh, but for now, uh, as the, for example, the time between getting a test and receiving a test 
Um, it's not right away. It may be several days. It's incredibly important that people self-isolate to not spread their infection. That is key, absolutely key. But there is a plan at some point to test people who have been at symptoms and they don't know if they have CV or not. It could be with something else, but the, there's a plan to have the people tested for CV. And if that is true, when would that kick in? So as I have mentioned before, we are trying to scale testing uh, through commercial laboratories and academic laboratories. As testing scales, more and more people with symptoms will be able to get tested and confirm their infection. But in the absence of being able to confirm an infection, anyone who is ill needs to stay home uh, and, and to the extent possible away from other uh, members in the household where they live. Um, this concludes our press conference for today. We do ask the press to refer to the FAQs that have been produced for you all today. Um, and we do have 20 representatives to speak on camera in Chinese, Vietnamese, and Spanish. Thank you. Thank you.